I got a question yesterday about slicers. All right, so if you've never heard of a slicer before, it comes from Microsoft Excel. And in a moment, I'm going to show you exactly what it is. And then more importantly, I'm going to show you how Tableau does slicers, right? Because the way Tableau does its filtering component, which is really what a slicer does, is a little bit different to traditional Microsoft Excel. So I'll show you the jump, right? So let's begin with a simple Excel example so you can see it in action. So here's what a slicer is in Excel. So I've got a bunch of companies here. I was doing some investing the other day and I have, you know, a bunch of software companies that I know of and their market cap, basically how much is the company worth? Okay. And I'm going to do a pivot table, right? So pretty standard stuff so far. We're going to go pivot. I'll put it in the existing worksheet. All right. And what we're going to do is I just want to see the total market cap by country, let's say. So I'm like summarizing it, right? So if I got country in rows and I got market cap in the values, so pretty simple. Now I can filter using this button, right? The row labels and I can click like this, right? It's sort of like a list based filtering, but you can use slices, which is more of a graphical filtering, right? And the way I do it is if I'm in the pivot table, I can go here to pivot table analyze and I can go insert slicer. I pick the field I want to create a filter for. So let's say I'll do two of them. I'll do stock name and we'll do country, let's say. When I go OK, you'll get two of these graphical filters. And basically, if I click on them, it only shows me Canada. Or maybe if I click multiple, it'll show me multiple. So it's really just a graphical filter, right? And you can see that from this other filter, it will actually do a hierarchy of filters. So let's say I go, I want to see all the uh, stocks in Canada, but I'm not interested in day car systems. So I can actually just select the other ones, right? And you can see this number is changing. So how does Tableau deal with it? Well, Tableau does it through interactive dashboard. So let's go build a, a few. Well, it's actually remarkably easy to set up. I usually show this to people within the first half hour of training, right? When they've never touched Tableau before. So it's really easy to use. Um, for advanced users, there's heaps of interactivity we can do. And I suppose if I have time in this video, I'll add that on as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear out this Tableau, these Tableau ones. So this is the Superstore data. A lot of people are familiar with it if they've taken my, my course. Right, and I'm just going to clear out all this extra stuff. All right, so we've got a fresh data set. And what I want to do is I want to create three charts, right? And I want to be able to filter between the three. So let me show you how that works. We're going to build a really simple one. <clears throat> let's say I want to see the order date and I want to see the, let's say the profit, right? And we'll make it a, you know, a graph, we'll make it a bar, okay? And we'll add maybe some color, all right? So I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm just going to do a little bit of cleaning here and there, but that's just really for, for me. Okay, so we've got profit here, all right? Let's do one for sales. Let's say I want to see sales by category and subcategory, right? And we go sales. And again, we want to make sure this is a graphical representation. We'll add color to the subcategory, uh, maybe the category, right? So again, we have another visualization. So again, just really simple ones. All right, uh, let's do quantity of units and let's split this up by, actually, you know what? Let's do a map, right? So I want to see by country. All right, so I've got my countries here and I want to know how many quantities per country. Okay, let's change this to an area type and I'm going to add the color in here. All right, so this is now quantity, all right? And I'm going to bring these all into a dashboard right here. And usually what I do is I just double click just to get them in there, right? Just to kind of see how it's going to look. And we're going to do a really simple, just a cleanup, right? Because this is not really about how to design dashboards. It's really about how to do the filtering, all right? So I'm going to bring this up here maybe. We'll put this at the bottom, right? And then we're going to get rid of this entire thing, right? We've got something like that. And maybe the map should be the biggest one. So we'll do it like this. All right, now let's say I wanted to do some filtering, right? So there's a few ways to do your filtering, All right? I can do it by a single filter for a single sheet. So let's say I wanted a filter to be able to select between these different 
uh, subcategories, right? So I can tick them and untick them, right? The way I would do that is I would go analysis, filters, and I can go subcategory, right? And you're going to see that it is now a selection. So if I get rid of chairs, you can see chairs disappears, right? But you'll also notice that these ones don't change. But remember, this is all one giant data set. So if I'm reducing this, then some of these should reduce as well, right? But it's not. And that's because this filter only applies to this one sheet. How do we make it so it applies to all the data sets? So that our deep dive is all kind of in synergy, right? And it's really easy to do. We click on these three, on this triangle. We're going to go apply to worksheets, selected worksheets, and we're just going to tick the other sheets, right? And you can see this number is now changing. So as I tick and untick, you can see that if I just look at, let's say, these bottom five, this is the profit for just these five items, right? So that is like a singular type of filter. But how do I do something else, like something like this? Let's say I just wanted to see 2019, right? And I can click on 2019 like that. I would like it that if I click on this, this will also filter for data that is only in 2019, right? I could add a filter like we just did. So I can go click this sheet, analysis, filters, and then the year. And again, it will add another year. And we can just go, well, show me 2019. But you know the annoying thing about this? This takes up space, right? It's another thing I have to go in and the list and check and all that kind of stuff. And it's a waste of space. So we can use instead the interactivity of the filters, right? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get rid of these, right? And instead, we're going to activate a sheet. And we're going to press this filter button right here. So let me zoom in, right? It's this little funnel looking thing. And that's all you have to do. So once you activate that, this sheet now becomes an interactive filter. If I click 2019, you'll see that the data sets are changing. If I look at 2018, this is much easier than a drop-down list, right? Because you're actually interacting with the data itself. I can say, show me 2016 and 17. I can just do a box like that. And this is now 2016 and 17. You can probably guess that I can go a bit further, which is I can make these ones filters as well. Filter and a filter, right? And what we'll do is we'll add some labels here. I want to add the labels of the countries themselves. Okay, so we get the countries like that. Okay, and let's say I want to see what's going on in Sweden, right? So let's zoom in a bit. All right, I want to know what's happening in Sweden. Instead of having a filtering list, I can actually just click Sweden, right? And you can see well, it's actually not very profitable in Sweden, right? But let's say we want to look at just office supplies. I can click on office supplies like so. I can deactivate it to go back to the full list. I can do just individual ones, right? So you can see how much, how easy it is to actually filter and deep dive your data. One of the things I do in my professional career, my professional life, is if I'm meeting with clients or customers and they want to know more about their data or they're trying to analyze something or trying to plan, the power of Tableau is that you don't have to actually answer their exact question. What you can do is build a dashboard like this to help them answer that question. So for example, right, I'm just going to clear some of this to make room. Let's say I'm meeting with some clients and they go, well, you know, we want to be able to analyze our countries, right? So I can go into the meeting room and be like, listen, I've prepared this to let us get into that, right? Which countries do you guys you know, have a lot of issues with? You know, it's like, well, you know, France has a lot of issues. Well, let's look at France. So I can just click on France like that. And they go, it's been profitable in the last two years, which is good, but the growth hasn't been that great. So let's look at 2019 compared to 2018. So we can just click here and go, all right, it looks a certain way. This looks a certain way. And just by simply clicking, you can get deeper into your data. Okay. Now, I promised earlier that I would show some more advanced features of filtering, right? Clicking and activating this button is very easy. So this is great for beginners. For more advanced users, you can actually change the behavior, right? So let me show you. I'm going to turn off these filters now, and I'm going to show you how to customize these filters, right? I'm just going to show a few of the things, right? So let's begin with the way you actually click, 
right? The way you interact with the sheet itself. I can go into analysis and then I can go into, what am I looking for? Actions, actions, sorry, dashboard. And you look for actions, right? Actions is basically what this thing is, right? These filters, right? That's, that's the category that they come in. But in this one, we can customize it a bit further rather than just a click and filter. So I can add an action, right? And I can do all sorts of actions. So filtering is what you just saw. Highlight is that when I click on something or I hover, it will highlight the other data sets, right? I can go to a URL. So let's say I wanted that if I click on a certain uh, sheet, it will take me to a website, which gives me more information. I can make it go to sheet. So it goes to another sheet within my workbook if they want to get more information, change parameter and change set values. These are a bit more advanced in that you can actually modify a parameter. A parameter is something that is a value that changes based on your control. So it's good for what if analysis, it's good for changing your view with just a few clicks. Set values is the grouping of values. Again, I've, all this stuff is covered in my Udemy course if you want to see it in more detail. We're just going to do the highlight one, which is kind of like a crowd favorite. So we'll go highlight. That's going to bring me up to this sheet. Now there's two main sections. This is the sheet that you click on, right? In this case, we're applying this behavior to all three, right? But actually, I don't want to. I just want to apply it to the quantity. So when I click on something here, I want to apply it to the rest. So what I do is I turn off the other two. Right? I only want this rule to apply to this quantity. Now, when I click on it, which sheets do I want to be affected by what I've just done? Right? In this case, we're going to do all three. Right? This bottom part, you can ignore. Right? In terms of the behavior, there's a few things we can do. Select is the normal one, which is basically you click it and something happens. Hover is when you're just hovering over, you're not actually clicking and it will do something. And menu, a menu bar comes up to say, what do you want to do, right? So let's do hover. I don't really see people use menu very much, but hover seems to be a favor. So we'll do that one. So we go, okay, right? So we've now created our action. It tells me this is the name. I, don't, I usually don't name them um, unless I have heaps of them. Um, it runs on a hover, so that's the action itself, and then the source and where it applies to. So we go OK. So now you'll notice I'm not going to click, but if I hover, it starts to do filtering, right? Okay, so that's kind of the behavior I want. Now you can see that some of this is not filtering. My guess is because this doesn't have the countries in them, right? But that's something you can correct later on. This is really just to show that you can do hover or select for different types of actions, okay? If you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, please let me know. I've really just covered it on, a, on the surface, um, but we can do some more examples if you guys are interested. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.